firstly, is Liz Truss safe as Prime Minister? Liz Truss has got the support of uh, the government. Um, it's really important at this time that we have stability. That's what the Chancellor's been talking about. That's what we're focused on in government. Uh, and that's what I think your viewers at home expect of us. You know, they're worried about their mortgages. They're worried about their energy costs. Uh, the last thing they want is more politicians talking about themselves. I'd say to colleagues, we've got to get behind the Prime Minister, work with the new Chancellor, put in place the... Uh, right medium-term financial plan that we need uh, and then move from there. Uh, at the very beginning of the programme, we spoke to Robert Halfen, uh, who was pretty clear uh, he was worried. He said he'd been talking to his constituents who were frightened uh, about what was happening uh, to the economy. He said that the current government looked like you were blowing up not only the Conservative Party but the country. And he effectively said that Liz Truss has got days to set out a new approach and to convince his colleagues and also the country that you've got a grip. Do you, do you accept that? Yeah, my constituents is worried too. Who, who wouldn't be? I mean, we've got a war on European soil. Uh, people have seen the turmoil in the markets and that's why the Prime Minister's acted. Um, and of course it's right that the government looks like uh, and is focusing on, on what really matters to people. Stability, uh, the energy price guarantee that we don't talk enough about because it's a really big intervention. It's bigger than the furlough. I mean, this affects every single household, every business for this winter. Uh, it's got a cost of around 100 billion, which is one of the reasons why we're having these conversations in such a profound way. But you've got to control what you can control. And what I and, and other ministers can now do is work really diligently, night and day, for the next two weeks, bring forward the plan that will give us the stability and confidence that we all need. So did you get it wrong then? You know, you, you announced, as you said, this big spending energy policy, £100 billion, at the same time as tax cuts, at the same time that you were saying you're going to be sticking to the same spending envelope. Was that wrong? Yeah, for sure. There's things that I think everybody in government would regret over the last week, and that's why the Prime Minister's made changes. But what we didn't get wrong, uh, and remember, that's why we had to act when we did, ahead of energy prices going up on the 1st of October, was that energy price guarantee. That's, that's okay. why the, the growth plan came forward when it did. Uh, and what's not wrong is to focus on economic growth. You can't just tax or spend your way to growth. So the Prime Minister's always been right about the focus on economic growth going forward. So you were right on the energy price guarantee, you were right on the focus on growth. What were you wrong about? Well, the rate of which uh, you could proceed and, as the Chancellor said yesterday, not involving the OBR in those conversations. I think it was, it was well meant to act as quickly as possible, uh, but clearly that, that uh, has caused some of the turbulence. Most of that is due to global factors. I agree with your previous guest, uh, Charlie Bean. About three quarters of all of the movements can be explained uh, by global factors, but, but that was wrong. We fixed that now. Uh, and there's a real job of work over the next few days and weeks, not long to wait, um, about how we can lay out a budget uh, and give people the certainty and confidence they need. Why was Kwasi Kwarteng sacked? Well, as I say, the Prime Minister um, concluded that the right thing to do was to make a change. It's not, it, it's not what anyone wants uh, when people in Westminster are talking about Westminster, Sophie. I've got constituents like Robert, yeah, people uh, up and oh, down the course, country are worried. C c come on, the ch who the Chancellor is and the reasons that the Chancellor was sacked after you know, a month in the job, that is all about policy. People are going to be looking at the judgment of the Prime Minister and thinking, what on earth is going on here? And the Prime Minister's exercised that judgment. She's brought in uh, a new and really experienced um, Chancellor, someone um, that's got a business background, uh, that understands uh, how you grow an economy. Uh, he's set out some of his priorities, but, but now we need a little bit of time to do that work. No one wants those decisions to be rushed. I understand everyone wants uh, decisions about what's going to happen immediately, uh, but we also want them to be right, mm. and we want the OBR to have a proper chance. Um, as we said, that was something that, did, that didn't go well. Um, we want to give the OBR a proper chance to look at those figures. Um, I want to look at a bit more about what you're likely to do in a moment, but first, just to look at the resignation... Say a resignation letter. It wasn't really a resignation, was it? Uh, the letter from Kwasi Kwarteng in response to his sacking. And I've just pulled out a couple of things here. Your vision of... This is to the Prime Minister. Your vision of optimism, growth and change was right. I believe your vision is the right one. We have responded to those, those events since we set out the growth plan. I mean, it's pretty clear looking at this letter from the Chancellor, that he thinks that this was the Prime Minister's vision that he was enacting. And you can see why, can't you? They were in lockstep together. And um, we've all, we're all in agreement, actually, uh, on the fundamental challenges that we face, which is this country needs a greater rate of top-line growth. 
We need to improve some of the workings of government that just make but everything everything so slow, Sophie. It takes sacked. too long to, to get the infrastructure built. To, it's too hard uh, to get affordable childcare. Um, there's broad agreement around that. Now, any government is, is a, a combination of people working together, trying to do their best, uh, not always getting everything right. Uh, and it's up to the Prime Minister to make those judgments about how best to configure her team. But if everyone, as you say, you know, you agreed on, on the strategy uh, and Kwasi Kwarteng thinks that he was enacting the vision of the Prime Minister, why was he sacked? Why was he sacked? It's the Prime Minister who should be going in that case, isn't it? No, look, this is a time when we need stability. I don't think anybody uh, would say that um, what the, the, the country needs right now is either more change uh, inside the Westminster bubble, nor a Labour government that will actually come forward and give more rights to the striking workers that are a, a real break on people's ability to go to work, nationalising energy companies, or as Mayor Khan says, taking us back into Europe. All of those things would increase the level of uncertainty. And people at home are just tearing their hair out with that level of uncertainty. What they want to see is competent government getting on with the job. Although, and that's, and that's, what, that's what, exactly what we're going to do. Although, if, the, if you look at the polls, what people at home want to see is a Labour government. Well, I, I, I think what they actually want to see, that's a reaction to uh, what's been going on over the last couple of weeks. What they actually want is calm, okay. they want stability and they want confidence. That's what the economy needs as well. OK, um, I just want to uh, play you uh, a clip from the US president. We've seen it this morning, I'm sure we've already seen it. Uh, but just for people at home, this is some comments from Joe Biden uh, in an ice cream parlour in Oregon. Let's just listen to what he had to say and then get your reaction. He was talking about the uh, Liz Truss uh, plan. Um, he was overheard in an ice cream parlour in Oregon saying, well, it was predictable. I wasn't the only one who thought it was a mistake. I mean, he is clearly talking about some of the government strategy there. Well, as I say, I didn't actually hear that. We didn't have the mm -hmm. chance to, uh, to see it on VT either. Um, the IMF, uh, who haven't been the, the, the biggest... Um, supporter of this government actually did say that economic growth is the right thing. It's what every country uh, should be focusing on. Uh, and I think that's very hard to disagree with. The, the government spends uh, literally hundreds of billions of pounds a year of people's money. Um, there's always scope for that to be improved. Um, and the UK economy hasn't grown at the sort of rate that will give us a sustainable NHS, sustainable high quality public services, now an increase in defence spend. The only way of squaring that circle, if you're not just going to tax hardworking people more, which is not the Conservative way, is to get the economy to grow a bit faster. I'm going to try one more time to play the clip, because <laughs> I appreciate it's difficult to respond if yeah. you haven't heard. Let's have a listen. Well, it's predictable. I, mean, it was, I wasn't the only one that thought it was a mistake. And, uh, the, and, yeah. But look, it, she. Uh, she well, I, I think that uh, the idea of cutting taxes on the super wealthy at a time when. Anyway, I just think. I, I, I disagreed with the policy, but. It's up to Great Britain to make that judgment, not me. He's talking there about cutting taxes. There's some ice cream he's got there. Yeah, it's, a, it's a healthy ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. Um, what do you make of that, though? I mean, you were, yeah. as you say, you were in the yeah. Treasury at the time these decisions yeah. were being made, cutting taxes for the super wealthy uh, at a time for economic growth. The message that sends out is so damaging. And, and, and that message has changed. But, but was but, it wrong? But, do you but, acknowledge but, that? But, Sophie, 98% of that package, which I regret the fact um, that we've not talked enough about that, was the nigh on 100 billion a year intervention well, to help, to help you've families. Already spoke, you've already spoken about the energy bill package. Yeah. Uh, Robert Halfen uh, earlier asked Liz Truss yeah. to apologise to his constituents. You've admitted yeah. some of your constituents were frightened. You talked about soaring mortgage rates. I just don't understand why you don't just come out and say, look, I'm, I'm really sorry we got that badly wrong. Well, effectively, I have. I mean, you can put different okay, words in my we'll, mouth, we'll but effective, we'll effectively, apologize. I've said that. But what I've also said... Well, will you apologise, then, to people who are seeing the mortgage rates uh, rises that we're looking at? The mortgage rates in the UK are very similar to the mortgage rates in the US. And last time I looked, uh, we don't run the US policy. So this is something that is happening globally. I, of course, I regret the fact that mortgage rates are rising for anybody. That's, that's a really challenging thing. And what the government's going to try and do 
both through its intervention in energy. I know people don't want to talk about that, but that is the, that is the vast, the vast amount other of well. the decisions that the government have made is that energy price guarantee that's giving people confidence and certainty. It's why, frankly, some of the other pa elements of that package, which became a distraction, uh, we had to uh, move on from because it is really important that people understand that. It also reduces the rate of inflation. So uh, f forecasters say that that will reduce the rate of inflation, which is one of the headwinds uh, that people are facing on the cost of living by about 5%. Now, that's really valuable. So you're not Joe, Joe Biden is not doing that okay. in the United States. We are doing that because we're a compassionate, conservative government that's trying to protect the most vulnerable people. So you're not taking the opportunity to apologise? I've, I've, I think I've been at, at quite length, Sophie, to talk about things that we would do differently, okay. but I'm much more interested, and I think your viewers are much more interested in what happens now. OK, you know, well, let's talk, going, going, let's talk about that. Going thank, you to... the, thank you for the interview tips. Let's, let's talk about that now, uh, because uh, the uh, last Wednesday at Prime Minister's Questions, the Prime Minister was asked if she was sticking to her promise uh, that she was not planning public spending reductions, and she replied, absolutely. Jeremy Hunt yesterday said we're going to have to look at some very tough decisions on both spending and tax. All government departments are going to have to find more efficiencies than they were planning to. So what is actually going on with spending? Well, I think spending will continue to increase, but perhaps not at the same rate uh, that it would have done. That's always an element of a, of a forecast. So just to jump in there... Uh, the Chancellor because... said there'll be difficult decisions that need to be made. Again, that's, that's fundamental. I think we all understand, whether it's doing our household economics or doing those for the country, that when you try and put a budget together, you do have to make some difficult decisions. So uh, just, just you said that spending will continue to rise, but not as fast as some uh, were expecting. Yeah. Uh, previously, the government was said it was still committed to the current spending envelope from the comprehensive spending review. Is that still the case? The chance has been very clear that everything's in scope. And right. I think, I think Sophie, that's the right thing to do. So that's not necessarily true anymore, that you are committed to that spending envelope? Everything, everything is in scope. Those are the decisions for the Prime Minister and the Chancellor to make once they've seen where the opportunities are. The state spends £900 billion a year. So whilst it's really important, it's vital uh, that the government puts fiscal, in, fiscal prudence at the heart of its budget, and that's what is going to happen over the next few weeks with the support of the OBR, it's never true that there are no decisions mm -hmm. that can be made within that sort of envelope. Can you commit to the proposed 3% increase in defence spending? Well, inimical to the fact I'm yeah. saying that everything is in scope, there are no commitments, I'm afraid, that I can okay. make um, at, at 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning because we're going into a process. I think, in fairness, you'd be the first to say, look, why would you be making decisions uh, without taking those into full consideration and without, of course, uh, involving the OBR, which is something that I think all of us have said that, with hindsight, uh, would have been nicer to, to do. Now... Listening to Jeremy Hunt yesterday, it sounds a lot like, you know, trustonomics is dead. He's talking about the need for fiscal responsibility, spending restraints, tax rises, uh, if necessary. Who's really in charge here? Well, he also said that he is at one with the Prime Minister on the big task facing our country, which is if we want to have high-quality public services, we want to spend more on the NHS, we want to deal with some of the really big issues in society like decarbonisation, and have low taxes that's going to make our economy competitive, then we're going to have to have a higher rate of economic growth. His words, my words, the Prime but Minister's very words. Very different ways of getting there. And that, everyone wants growth. Well, it's, the same, wants growth. it's the same destination. Everyone There'll always be... Growth. I don't think the... you see any government of any stripe who said that they're not, they don't want economic growth. The, the question is how you get there. And I have to say, Liz Truss, during that leadership campaign, Jeremy Hunt yesterday, they have got completely different visions. Even you would acknowledge that. Who is the real Prime Minister, no, Jeremy I... Hunt or Liz Truss? I... I, I wholly disagree that they have different visions and in fact I think what unites the Conservative Party is that we believe in a competitive economy, we believe in people keeping as much of their own uh, income as they can, we believe in low taxes but we also believe in protecting the most vulnerable and having high quality public services. So if, if we believe in all of those things the only thing left to reconcile is economic growth uh, and we are the party that wants to come forward we want to improve the clock speed of the economy these things they call supply side measures are really real because they are you know getting that local road built okay. making sure there's a new facility for your local gp those are the sort of things my constituents are worried about and um, just finally uh, and i know you want to talk about policies uh, rather than personalities but the papers are full uh, of speculation about potential unity candidates to uh, replace uh, Liz Truss, quite an unusual one on the front page of the Sunday Mail. I'm not sure if you've uh, seen it, uh, but the uh, front page of the uh, Sunday Ma Mail uh, showed a picture of yourself uh, saying that you might be uh, able to, uh, about to enter number 10. 
I'm well, I can give you an exclusive that that is absolutely never going to happen, Sophie. I think poor I old think Ben. Got, I think yeah. poor old Ben Wallace has been uh, greatly, greatly slandered, if whatever the term is. But uh, no, bit no, of confusion I've, there. I've got a you... very important job to do supporting the Chancellor. On a serious note, mm. uh, what would you say to colleagues uh, who are looking uh, to put Liz Truss on notice, who are looking and having those conversations, trying to find a unity candidate? They're worried about the polls. They're worried about the economy, and they think it's time for her to go. I understand the worry of, of, of colleagues. Um, they, they're all trying to do the best uh, for their constituents. Um, but if we want to be taken seriously as a party, seriously in the country, we have to unite. We have to get behind the Prime Minister. You know, Europe, there is a war on European soil. People are facing a really difficult cost of living challenge. Uh, and they're really worried. Uh, and so they don't want to hear disunity from the Conservative Party. They don't want to hear about another leadership campaign. Uh, we saw the damage, frankly, that that did this summer. They want us to unite, be serious, okay. uh, and get back to work and do what we've got to do over the next couple of weeks. OK, thank you very much for being on the programme uh, today. Thank you.